Hi guys, I was going to uh, do an article on the Mohawk news called Hungry Games because they've starved the indigenous in the First Nations and here in America for a long time and it still is a vicious cycle. However, I saw the Farm Bill was going to cut food stamps for regular Americans. One out of every seven Americans is now on food stamps. So we're going to use food as a weapon like we do with sanctions and everything else. We're going to push the GMOs, the vaccines. We've got what? Harp, chemtrails. It's hard for organic farmers to even grow food now because of the acidic soil from the chemtrails, which there has been direct correlation be between that. I am an organic farmer somewhat. Um, we have chickens and stuff. But uh, my problem is, is food as a weapon. And the experiments that they have done as food as a weapon. Now I'm going to leave you a link because they did take it out of the farm bill and they're going to use it as a separate issue. And I believe on that separate issue that they're going to make you um, a drug test and put you on some kind of work program for your food. Um, I don't know if they'll give you cash, but um, if you're working and it's just for food, you might as well stand out on a corner and with the sign, hungry will work, you probably have a better chance. Um, I, I just think this is sad because they're talking about this is the big bar, part of the budget. Uh, the budget is a military industrial complex and that's funding all the damn wars. So this empire system needs to come to an end. Now I'm going to leave you a link to a couple of articles on the farm bill. And I don't know if you know very much about farm bills. Farm bills pays farmers not to grow crops in some instance, instances. And it, and it also pays farmers to grow GMO crops in other instances. And usually that ends up bankrupting the farmers. So either way, it's a win-win for them. So the farm bill just sucks. That's all I can say. Now, uh, to get to... Uh, the other article about experimenting with people on starvation that has been done, and I believe that's what they want to do here. So, uh, I have a suggestion, though. I know a lot of people who, who sub me live in my local vicinity, and I, I think that we should all get together face-to-face. -to -face. You can come to my property. I'll feed you organic food here. Um, and we should all have a face-to-face, -face, and if you want to do that, you email me. If you're in the Washington State, Puget Sound area, come here. Let's talk face-to-face -face, um, and see what we can work out. And everybody in their little states need to, to, to do the same thing. And then we'll just, you know, we'll communicate and see what kind of solutions we can find for the hung, hungry games. Because they're using us as a Petri dish to see if they can do what they did to the indigenous. And I think they can. And... Um, well, here, let me just get to this article by the Mohawks. And I will be leaving a couple of uh, what happened with the farm bills because I saw it in one of our local things I go to. Not that I really like uh, doing reading it. It's usually propaganda. And you'll, and you'll see if you link to it, it's very liberal. Okay, this is called Hungry Games. And in the 1930s, the modern state laid claim to the individual body for its own social, economic, and military needs. Useless bodies were made useful by being used in, in the National Project of Regeneration. In March 1942, a group of scientific and medical researchers went to Norway House, Cross Lake, God's Lake Mine, Rossville, and the Pause in northern Manitoba, Canada. Conditions were deplorable. The people were starving. Their task was to conduct experiments on us through controlled starvation. Sponsors were Indian Affairs, the New York-based Mill Bank Memorial Fund, the Royal Canadian Armed, or excuse me, Air Force, and the Hudson Bay Company managers were Dr. Percy Moore of Indian Affairs Medical Services and Dr. Friedrich Tisdale, he was with the Royal Canadian Air Force. Ten Nuremberg co-principals came out during the Nuremberg doctor's trials addressing the 
atrocities of Nazi doctors and scientists as ethically wrong. Scientic, scientists viewed it as a code for barbarians and not for civilized physician investigators of our people. During and after the war, hunger was epidemic among indigenous. Violating the Nuremberg Code, the researchers saw residential schools and our communities as experimental materials and laboratories. To pursue their political and professional interests, 50% of indigenous people died during and after these exper experiences. The researchers argued that white people had to be protected from the Indian reservoirs and vectors of diseases like tuberculosis. And tuberculosis wasn't introduced into this country until after the colonials came. So just to let you know, you know, you probably already know that. The James Bay survey at the Ottawa Piscot and Rupert's house searched for the connection between food nutrition and the Indian problem. Researchers found a terrible state of malnutrition leading to general apathy, slowness, inertia, and premature aging. Indigenous were to be led away from racial idolent habits caused by their easy means of feeding themselves. <coughs> Most Native Americans know how to fish and hunt and also know the rooted foods you can eat. More in 1941 article said that because the Indian has the psychology of a child, you know, and I am indigenous, so I guess I'm childlike, researchers should not tell them about the researchers. Studies were made possible by their access to deliberately starved children through being made wards of the state. And let me tell you, they also made a lot of money doing this. Controls and experiments and subjects were set up the children that were deprived for two to five years of, of nutritionally inadequate diets and denied dental care to create an, an, an anemia. In the 1950s, the Indian Affairs went after the Eskimos. They actually relocated them to an animal-less area without their consent, and they starved, killed many of them. I, I can just tell you that. I th uh, they used 9,000 Eskimos as a laboratory experiment and gave, give the imagination full reign on what might be done to improve the culture. We continue to be experimental materials and laboratories for scientific and social experimentation. They are part of a larger institutionalized, dehumanizing, colonial, racial idea that continues to be Canada's policies towards us. Though we develop most of the food eaten worldwide, we continue to be one of the most starved. Willie Dunn saying governmental death dealing tricks. Crowfoot, Crowfoot, why the tears? You've been brave for many years. Now I'm going to try to make this short. Um, they also did this to Native Americans in, um, in America. And, and recently in our time, they've done it in First Nations Canada. And recently they're doing it here also. So using food as a weapon is, is wrong in my eyes. That's, just, that's all I can say. It is a crime against humanity. It is a crime against the earth. It is a crime against the creator of all of us. And um, it upsets me. It really does. And I must tell you, I wanted to get this out. And I love you all. And I think that maybe locally, if we can all get some get-togethers to go, like I said, my house is open for one if you live in my area. Um, sometime in, in the near future, I may be going to Oregon and meeting up with some people. And I would I would one day like to get to Idaho. Uh, that was sent to a particular person. Um, but what, what I would would say is maybe we can locally... Get the people we know that are kind of like us, set differences aside, and see if we can find solutions. Screw the empire. I'm tired of the empire system. They're, they they just, they're mad, psychopathic. They think they're divine rulers, and they're not. And um, I'm sovereign, and I, I'm sure you feel that way too. And I'm going to stay that way. And peace, love, and truth to everybody. Leave your comments below. Love you. Linda's out.